forget about that other eye. <laughs> this is gonna, we're talking about eyes. It's stupid, it was kind of dumb of me to do that because we're gonna be paint, painting a dog next anyway. But, you know, if let me just do the one eye. I'm gonna probably concentrate on this eye since I'm right over it and stuff and I can see it really well and stuff. Go back to that basic, you know, um, and shape here and stuff. Ooh, it's an eye. You guys keep going with what you were. I just want to make give you guys a little more info and stuff, and and, and about crossing hairs and stuff over the eyes and when to do it and stuff like that, because that's really kind of you know timing when it, uh, of when to put things in and stuff. For me, it, that's it's all a, it gets down to that at the end. Okay, so you got the basic shape, right? You know, and when we know we're gonna have a just a little bit of an arc here for the uh, highlight or the over the roundness of this eye and stuff. Stuff so you got a little bit of hair coming in from from over here from from the eyebrow drooping in already, and you got the eyebrow which is now gonna be over here, right? See, I, my madness, I'm mad, I'm crazy, but we're just gonna really dig right into this eyeball. I probably should have just gave you guys that, but you know, hey, that'd be different. Even though I got the, you know, even though I hate this little highlight right here that hits in the middle and stuff, I like that eye, I like this one a lot better. I'm able to just, just scrub it out and do the other eye now. I know. <laughs> I'm not going to. I'm not going to, but I'll probably take. I'm gonna. What I'm gonna end up doing for you guys is probably. I'm gonna move that highlight because I can't stand it right, right here in the middle. Is it? That's you know usually bad. But I'm. I'm just gonna go over what I I do, what I'm gonna think about, and then I'll I'll just change it. It's really just a highlight. But I think this one over here has a lot more. Uh, interest in it and stuff but we're, I'm so, gonna... so which eye are we painting now is it which eye i have no idea i have no <laughs> idea now i'm gonna paint this eye okay. but i'm gonna steal i'm gonna steal the information from that guy because this guy over here has i can see easily for you guys i can see the see where the information is and stuff but i'll be i'll just be painting it here i'm and then at the end i'll just put put the highlight here and a highlight here and now we'll be pretty much same thing. Way too much information, thank you, stuff. Uh, eyeball colors and stuff. I, I'm gonna start off right off my darks. This is the purple, this is the lizard and crimson and, uh, and, and blue. And this is on the lizard and crimson side. Stuff it might even, since I'm doing it just a little bit bigger, it's showing up a little bit more really make sure I can see, you can see a little bit of red in there and stuff. What the red will do in, in, in these eyes and stuff, it takes you back. Usually uh, reds uh, come forward in visual, visuals and stuff like that, like uh, street lights and stuff like that. Red just pops out at you and comes at, hits you in the face. Uh, in darks and stuff, sometimes when it, it's surrounded by darks, It'll take you back in the into things like stuff like that. So that's why I want to get that in in right about there and stuff uh, in in the in the pupil and, and probably usually in the middle of the pupil and then maybe around the outside I'll go with the blue. And that's where I'm gonna get some blue purple. This is the lizard crimson and blue purple mix, and I will get that. So basically, depending on the size of the eyeball, this is the, the co color combination I will use. These are my very darkest darks and stuff, and depending on the size of the eyeball and stuff, how, how I mean, uh, the pupil and stuff, how big it gets because of the light and stuff. So these are my darkest darks into the pupils. They, that's what's gonna make it stand out. You might even start using some of that purple and stuff just on the outsides here and stuff too. Dig it in here. Stuff is a little thin right now. I'm kind of chickening out using it. 
this next color is the uh, Venice or the uh, blue and the uh, transparent oxide and stuff. So between the, the purple mixes and when you put on the, the background mix and tone, did you clean your brush? Did you wipe it in the baby oil or? Oh, okay. I, just, no, I just wipe it out. All right, so thank I, you. It stays really dark. I'm gonna be going, I usually don't clean my brushes very often. I usually go, try to go from one dark to the next dark and then, you know, just being able to wipe them out is, is uh, probably usually good enough. Uh, next I'll go and use this. This is the, the warm red I was using, the, the transparent oxide red, mixing with blue and stuff. And this guy I would use up here and he's gonna probably feel since he is, I'm blowing up, painting so much bigger, you can just, if I was painting small, he'd look, feel a little, be about the correct light. I probably have to add just a little bit more blue into this thing at the edge and stuff. But I want to see some warmth in the in the tops, in the lids and stuff. Okay, on the, on the red side or the blue side, this one? This one's on the red side. Okay. And you're going to find that underneath here too. I, Kind of went a little bit too round here on my second drawing. But a lot of the stuff I'll catch, I always catch in the end. And I'll use the blue section here. This is a more, little bit more blue. Sorry. Talk. Think. This one here is oxide blue, oxide red and blue. And I put it on the bottom of his of his eye, and I'll also start bringing in a little bit of up here and stuff around. I can see around the eyelids and stuff. You just see some of the creases up here in this area here. So I was going to put it in there, but the pupil I want to keep very dark. Uh, blend these colors out a little bit. One of the things I also I'll say to you guys too is keeping eyes soft a little bit and stuff. Uh, that even when you you do uh, edges and stuff at the end, you'll probably want to go back in and soften an edge like this just to uh, make it not jump out at you a little bit. Um, next, I'll go in. I'll paint the the iris. So, want to soft this thing little demos sometimes as I go here. This is just, just the basics. We're going to get it in. Um, I'm going to go with the very dark. I usually work dark to light. So this would be uh, burn umber and uh, cad red. And this is going to be the for most of it. I'm not going to worry about painting in uh, the the highlight too much or the I'll leave a space for uh, the whites. And where's but I'm not going to uh, worry about it. Like I said, I was also going to steal a little bit of from this eyeball there so I can see there's a little more light in this area here and stuff. So I'll be painting, usually paint these eyes just a little. So that's just straight burnt burn number and uh, and cad red. It's on the burn more burn number in it. So now what I do, yeah, I'm still using a very big brush here. Then I go to the more cad red version of it. And you're going to find that inside this area here. Usually there'll be one more ring of darkness going around this eyeball. But then inside here, there were going to be the medium lights and stuff going in here. Really start to bring this life. This is where I was talking also about getting the age of the dog correct and stuff. You can do that by watching this area here of how much goes in this, how much these colors and stuff uh, shine and stuff inside the, uh, the 
iris here. Okay, so the CAD, more, the more CAD red was more on the outside of the iris or the inside? Inside. Okay. Burnt, it's more darker on the outside. Even, and then we're gonna go back and paint the ring afterwards, a little bit darker too. Oh yeah. Uh, that ring though, I think I, if I was doing and I'm doing it and stuff for a finished painting and stuff, I probably almost go back to the blue and uh, glycerin crimson back here and do the ring in that. You know, that's that strong. Oh, what color is that, Jim? This is would be a this is a glycerin crimson and blue again. The very first color we made and I'm going to hit the red a little bit more so I'm using basically this color right here and putting it right here on the outside of the iris and I'll go with the blue and put that on the inside here I'm, and that's that's just because of what I see with this in the photo and stuff it's not a not a guideline it's just what I'm doing because I see it I see a blue tinge right in here, and it could be coming off of uh, the white whites of the eyes and stuff. Over here, it just felt a little redder and stuff. So basically, it, and at this stage, it's so dark and stuff, you, you can't see it anyway. And then over here, I just felt like just putting in a little, this is a, on the outsides here, this is, I'm going back in with the uh, transparent oxide and uh, blue mix, going back into it just a little bit on the outsides here, so pushing it out. So. And I'm gonna, a lot of times I just want to get rid of the white. A lot of good mixing and stuff's going to go end up going on in here and stuff. But I would want to just get rid of the whites. Oh, dots and stuff. Okay. Uh, next, next we'll, we'll go basically the how I mix the colors. Now I'm going to go and put in uh, put in uh, the whites. And this is a lizard crimson, just a little bit of white into it. My brush is a little dirty. I got a little burn out, burnt sand in here already. So everything should be in a good spot, especially this thing. This thing might end up being a little, little bright, just putting it here and stuff, but we'll put it, put it in here and I'm just gonna twist and try to go around the light. What color is that, Jim? This is uh, alizarin in blue and white. This is one of the, the highlight. Okay. And should be on the blue side, even though it mixed up here a little bit. And even on here, as we go around this, this eyelid. Are we going over this with a lighter color later? <laughs> oh, because of, uh, it's you not, can always go. It's not that light. But you know, I mean, you know, I would normally probably use white on this, so you know, yeah. the learning experience. Yeah, I'm just trying to get right. Yeah, at this point right now, I'm just trying to get uh, the values about right in in the in the major in, in the major shape. I'm not trying to get the uh, exact color yet. I'm trying to get the ba basic uh, uh, the basic color. I'm just, and then I'll go back in and refine it. Like with this one, I, you can tell, yeah, it's, it mixed, it mixed a little dark. I probably still had a little bit too much uh, paint on here and stuff, but I can, you know, I'd go back in and just lighten it up. It actually looks a little lighter than mine, but that might just be the monitor. Yeah, it could be that. And it could be, uh, you know, I, I'm really uh, putting the paint on too. This is kind of thick. So it's really is a, uh, you know, uh, covering up pretty nicely. But also there, I'm also would be going into this thing one more time and trying to put in one more tone here and there. 
you know, this is more the blue, blue, blue and white. In fact, I think this is going to be, I was going to use this, this color here for the highlight and stuff. But it also, a lot of times, these paints and stuff, you know, aren't, aren't just for one spot. You know, you can use them for other spots. You know, as they go against uh, other colors, they are going to uh, just change their values and stuff. The other color is going to have an effect on the color right next to it and stuff. So, you know, even if I use it here, it doesn't mean I can't use it for the highlight or something like that, too. I don't have to reinvent the wheel for every color. Um, but that being said, I, I do mix up all my colors that time. Um, so again, this was a uh, lizard crimson and blue. It's on the blue side for this, where I saw here, but also I'm gonna have to darken in uh, this tear duct. This tear duct I've, I've made way, you know, I, brought, I took the highlight into it and stuff like that. And it's probably going to have to be just toned down. Usually they're right here. This, this is where that third eye usually or their third lid you know, is hidden. Stuff. So it's usually a little bit darker right in, 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 the, in these tear ducts. All right. So basic, we got the basics in already on this guy. Um, you know, you got your irises, your darkest part. I got a little transparencies going on in here because of my big brush and stuff, and I'm painting it a lot bigger than I usually would. Um, you guys know me; I <laughs> it's a little crazy how small you can paint. Sometimes you guys don't get to see all the details. I like um, the detail. I know this is the. I know that's what I got. I'm trying to say this is not a this is not a painting class. This is a workshop. We workshop on the eyes. I tried to, I tried to learn, I tried to learn. Um, okay, so basic block out in the eye. We've got the dark, very darks in the front. And they're cool, these are cool in the, in the pupils. Very warm on the outside, about the same value almost, going in for these shadows and stuff. Now I'll go back in and just start digging around a little bit more, but uh, you know, probably trying to get one more value deeper in, in the iris and stuff. And it's usually gonna be more uh, in in this section up here and stuff, and maybe around and, and underneath. Right here, I would say, you know, it's gonna lighten up, but everything else is gonna, might go a little bit darker here and there. So I'm gonna go, you know, over that, uh, basically what I used here for uh, the burnt, uh, this is red oxide and, and uh, in blue and stuff. I'll be using that just to dig into these this outside the uh, parts of the eye here. On the blue or on the red side? This is on uh, the blue side thing. Thanks. Yeah. So this has blue side in it. And I'll be using that on the outside of this eye a little bit, mostly a top. On, on the top area here and around this comes down around the iris a little bit too i'm sorry which blue was it this is uh uh this is uh oxide red and blue it's on oh. just on the blue side now i'm kidding making sure that you guys can see that. You guys probably can't see it. I'll bring you guys in real quick in a minute. So, but also, now I'm gonna dig in down on the bottom of the eye. Not too many times we're gonna really be doing, you know, an eyeball, eyeball this uh, intensely and, uh, and stuff. We're gonna be doing a lot simpler in a painting and stuff. Because whatever we do here in this eyeball, we're going to end up having to do to the rest of the painting. So if this is not just a big giant eyeball, we're in trouble. So this, I'm going back around the rings a little bit. That's the shadow. And I'm going to, at the bottom of this eye, it's going to be just a little bit more of a shadow working in. And I'm just going to softly 
soften that line I just made back in, into the eye instead of going, you know, the drawing just before it has a nice quick uh, transition into, into the iris and stuff. So, all right, um, next thing. I might even, I'm gonna go back in, I'm gonna make just a little more opaque in the middle here. Just a little more opaque right there. Also, I feel like I can go just a hair darker right there. And this hair, okay. All right. And my pupil um, kind of red. Yeah, you need, you'll definitely need the straight blue in the, into it sometimes. Sometimes, you know, as you get going into these things, yeah, you might just, just put a big, nice big blue in there too. Don't worry about it. Also look for, if you use it there, maybe you can find another spot around, around this outside stuff. You, you could put a little bit of blue into it. I would look, say look for blue because of this because of this orange and stuff definitely look for a little bit of blue to put in into these into these darks and stuff so it's not and this is like straight blue almost I'm putting right in this corner and stuff all right uh, basic uh, basic eye I probably dig into this into the iris one more time with a little bit of that lighter uh, Cad red and and burn umber mix. Taking out just one more spot here. Probably just a little bit lighter than uh, I had before, so it had just a touch more cap red into it. And really, it's just going to go on the very inside of this line and stuff. It's not going to go all the way uh, to the dark line and stuff. It's going to be more in the middle of this 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 area here and that's where you always look for to catch some real color stuff like I can see it right here I can't see too much on, on this one this one doesn't really have a lot of highlights and of course it's the one I drew right but this one has a lot huge light light area right here and you can really see the color in this area and stuff so that's what I'm stealing that gonna steal from that for you guys and you don't see this color diving too much up top. It's really on the lower part of the eyeball. And that's usually how it is because of the shadow, because the way the, the, uh, the eyelid is coming over the eye and stuff is causing that shadow and stuff. And so this part of the eye is going to be a little darker. Uh, okay, so we're pretty close. Now we're getting into the highlights, All right? Let's get into some of the skin. One of the favorite things I like to do uh, at this point, or when I say about the eyes getting about about done and stuff like that, is this uh, this underneath the eyeball right here and stuff. You know, you got that skin. You can, you can just see it. You got he has, she has. You know, you can just see that you got the just this little purple cut from the for, of that's the uh, the eyelid underneath eyelids catching light showing that it has a ridge to it and stuff and I always like to grab do that and I usually do it in my knife and I always find this to be a purple it could be uh in in this this case it is a cool purple so it is on the lizard crimson and uh, blue side we mix it up and stuff um it's not as prevalent on this side of the eye because um, this one has more light, but I'm gonna steal, be stealing it from this side of the eye and just taking it over here. Uh, yeah, it does. It goes really close to the whites of the eye. As you can see, we already have the whites of the eyes there and stuff. Uh, so it's, but because I'm doing bigger stuff, I'm, you know, it's uh, not quite as, uh, it's a little bit easier. It's a little bit farther for me to do. But I'm just going to be putting that arc in. I like to put it in with a knife. And when I put it in with a knife, I do it. Uh, my knife is very flat. I just 
scrape some paint on this way on it and stuff. So I just have a little bit of ridge of paint on one side of the one side of my blade, this side of my blade. I just have a, just a little ridge of paint. And I like to be able to kind of like with a, like an ice skate and stuff, just be able to lay it in here, you know, and, you know, recreate that arc and stuff and get that get that thickness of the paint and stuff because it just uh, just seems right. It's what seems right. Then I go back in and start digging out little uh, highlights and stuff I find around here. Um, what, what color are you putting on the knife? The knife I put in on was uh, just a little bit bluer. Then uh, I added that King's Blue to the, to the uh, eyeball uh, highlight and stuff. Uh, that's what I put in right here. Just a little more King's Blue into it. But it's mixing with the, the colors underneath and stuff. And it is really uh, darkening up a little bit. When you do that arc, are you staying on the edge of your knife or do you flatten your knife a little bit. No, it's all edge. It's all oh. edge. It's all edge. I'm just really just just like this, you know, just drawing it out. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. And that's what I like about this guy. I was also talking about this knife too, doing that stuff too. This knife, you know, you can do it, you can do an arc and it'll leave the paint like in an arc and stuff because it, it, it is an arc, it's flat. This thing's a flat surface. And when I do it sometimes and stuff, you, you're gonna get a lot of overlap from, from one, uh, one part of the blade to the second. So it's, it's gonna give you a little break and stuff. But I felt that that is sort of what's going on there. It's not quite as clean. Also, we're talking about putting in highlights. Um, other things, let's put in the highlights. I'll be working towards the highlights and stuff now. Um, I'm going to feel like I steal the colors from this eye, put the highlights in from this eyeball, because this one, ah, I don't like it. Um, shape wise, just remembering where it is and about the spots and stuff. Uh, I like to put them in with my knife because I, because I like, like them clean. And stuff, so just a little dots and stuff. Of course, I'm painting a lot bigger and stuff. Uh, so when I put it in, I would just usually I, I just have to put it in like that when I'm doing a little teeny eye and stuff like that. I could just put, put it in like that, and they work great. But since I'm painting a little bigger, I gotta come down and bring it down a little bit bigger, make a bigger eye, so make sure it gets. It's the color. This, color eye, is this eyeball has also has a like a little secondary reflection right next to it, right in here, too. That little shape right in here. Of course, I didn't draw it right. Oop. Okay, so which color was this highlight? This highlight was uh, back to burn umber and white. Uh huh. And then I just put just a little bit of the blue into it and stuff so it's not too bright, right? Even though when I put it in here and stuff, it gets very bright. Because I'm putting it on with my knife, you can do it. But if you want to put it on with a brush, I would recommend a number two or... How about a number zero? <laughs> you could put it in with a zero. I, I always have a what problem. You, then? <laughs> I when I you can use a you can use don't I say, tell you right now do you practice using a knife because it's gonna come in oh, I got it. with fur and stuff like that. But it also, you know, you gotta you gotta know yourself. I know as soon as I put a small of a brush in my hand, I'll it doesn't come out until I've touched everything. And usually that's what I know. For me, that will kill kills the painting. It's a slippery slope. Yeah. Uh, another thing, if you are going to use uh, 
I'll do this next one with a brush because I'm on this side of, over here. You're going against wet, dark paint, right? So dip your brush, just take a little bit of oil first. Make sure you got a clean brush, right? Dip it in oil, just dip it, just the tip it in oil a little bit before you grab your paint. You Which know. oil? The, you want to show you? The safflower oil? Yeah, the safflower oil. Not the baby oil. Don't ever touch that baby oil until you're cleaning up. <laughs> You'd be in trouble. You don't paint your, you paint with baby oil. This thing will never dry. Um, but if you do that, if you dip your brush in oil, clean it, dip, dip it in oil, grab your paint, you know, just grab your paint. You get like one really good stroke out of this where you can put, you know, go over dark and you can get it, you can get it back to white. That's about it. The next one I do, it's going to get darker. And the next one I do is get darker and it gets darker and it gets darker. That's a good thing to know, though, when you when you get that when it gets darker, darker, that's when you can go from different points of your painting and really finish it off very quickly. <clears throat> But you get the first highlight, you get a free one. Second one, you start the colors start to blend in. All right. So let me fix that up a little bit. What, um, what brush? What was that? His number two brush. That was my number two. I was just trying to. I would also. I was just going to say I would usually put it in with my knife too. Put that one in with my knife. But. Uh, I wanted to show so a lot of people don't aren't going to be you will be using want to use their brushes and stuff so that's what you do. Okay. but also what happens when you do go come in here and stuff it will uh you can find good ways that you see what's on your brush and go from one spot to another and find find a nice area in, in here to dig in that that color you just put down might be mixing and stuff that it might have a nice effect over here somewhere So just pay attention to what's on your brush. Okay, Jim, I have an observation. Remember I told you that that color I was putting on um, on the sclera, I thought yeah. it was too dark? It's not. It's not now? I Yeah, it's like, yeah. So was I right or wrong? You're right. See, everybody yeah. remember that, okay? Everybody remember <laughs> that. that Remember this day that Mary Beth said I was right. <laughs> that's something I tell yeah. you. That's right there. I think I think the Earth moved. Would you take a picture of this uh, example and send that to us in a PDF? Because I would love to make notes on on that. Sure, sure. Yeah. I can, Thank I'll I, I'll save this. When I'm get done, and I'll try to I'll try to make some more notes and stuff myself. But maybe uh, that's a good one. Okay, some of these areas here, just like we were talking about, little dots, the dots. Sometimes you guys probably most of my class and stuff don't really get to see these things because we're running out of time and stuff. But it's usually these little you find these little, little dots in 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 the corners, a highlight, extra highlights in the within the highlight. And stuff that that are really good to key little little nice little things to find will really start to add up. But also let's say I say that, but I also say you're gonna kill it. You loved it, you loved it, you killed it, right? You loved it to death. <clears throat> so really watch how you do. Um all right. A couple little things I want to say also about is putting hairs and crossovers in the eye that really will bring those, bring the eye to, to life is, you know, the hairs around this eye that are crossing over it and stuff. Uh, you know, usually I, I wanna put them in, as, in, a, in one stroke and I wanna put them in simply and don't go back into, you only get one shot at putting in uh, the hairs and stuff. And even if it doesn't, isn't the best perfect, doesn't match up and stuff exactly, that's okay. You gotta live with it because you just create more work. Stuff. So I'm saying about adding just a couple little hot hairs from here to here, 
basically if I if I just washed my brush out, just has just a little bit of oil in it. This is a nice synthetic. This is a rosemary uh, ivory and stuff. has a has a very clean edge. I can just cut right through it and just move paint. Basically, it's a really good way to move paint out of the way without um, wiping off uh, everything else you just did. Details. So if I was going to put in hairs in here and stuff, I'd probably just put them in like that. You know, go back and thicken them out. Uh, a couple little hairs there. There's a couple up top that come in right here and stuff. Just by wiping it off, you can wipe it almost back down and you're still going to get these gradations of the color underneath. That is if you're using an oil prime canvas, uh, good quality stuff will help a lot. Uh, and stuff. So I will be going just to drag a few things. Another thing you might want to do, another good option too is once we get things is, you know, you do can do a scratch. Scratches work really well for hairs and stuff. We can get those guys in. Stuff. And talked about adding fur and stuff. We'll get into the, all that stuff on the next one, but this is pretty much how we're gonna, you know, handling the eye at on just the eye level. 